Hello, everyone, and welcome to reInvent, um, and welcome to my talk, uh, specifically uh, getting into cost management uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, looking forward to digging into that with you today. So my name is Casey Doran. I lead the product management team at Aptio Cloudability. I've been working on at Cloudability for three years, helping meet uh, customer needs uh, in cloud financial management overall, and specifically in the area of cost allocation for Kubernetes. Before we get deep into uh, Kubernetes cost management, I want to spend a few minutes uh, talking about overall cloud financial management and how we think about that at Aptio. So first, you have to think about more traditional workloads. So infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, things you may be running on Amazon, like Amazon EC2, Amazon EKS. And this is the focus of our CloudAbility product. You also need to think about, if you happen to be moving workloads to the cloud, those migration projects. Um, and you want to track you know, performance of those migrations and make sure you're allocating, allocating cost appropriately to that. And this is the focus of our CloudAbility Shift product. And finally, you want to think about SaaS as well. Um, one of the largest spend drivers in the cloud, um, and this is the focus of our CloudAbility SaaS product. Three primary things that you want to think about in all of these areas is how you allocate costs, how you optimize those costs, and then how you perform chargeback to the right cost centers to, to make sure that you are allocating that cost properly. So considering your traditional infrastructure as well as your containerized infrastructure, you essentially have two different ways that you need to think about cost allocation. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So I want to start with a little bit of a customer story. In uh, around 2017, uh, customers started to come to us that were, that were using Kubernetes. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of great reasons. You might use, use Kubernetes, portability, scale, et cetera, for your workloads, but they were very quickly encountering a cost allocation challenge that they needed to solve. So what are some of those challenges? First, uh, they immediately had a lack of visibility into consum consumption of their shared clusters. They needed to allocate those shared costs to the correct cost centers. And then third, they needed to assure that they could allocate those Kubernetes workloads alongside non-Kubernetes workloads to perform full charge back uh, across both constructs. So what are some best practices that we put into place for that customer to help them solve that problem? So the first thing is you need to collect utilization data based on Kubernetes constructs like cluster, namespace, label key value pair, and associate that with billing data in the AWS cur. Second, you want to make sure you're aligning your Kubernetes labels to cost centers. So think about things like team, application, business unit, and make sure that you're labeling those workloads in a way that allows you to use those data to perform chargeback. And lastly, uh, you know, in terms of the need to align Kubernetes workloads with non-Kubernetes workloads for chargeback, you want to unify your constructs for labeling and tags together. Uh, so the, those tags that come you know, on an individual workload in the cur file are also aligned uh, with labels for in the Kubernetes data. If you're able to do that, you can then allocate as well as optimize. You can allocate costs by clusters and namespaces. You can analyze Kubernetes costs by cost center using label key value pairs. And then lastly, you can allocate Kubernetes and non-Kubernetes costs to the correct so cost center, as well as reduce idle resources in the cluster. So let's dig into that a little bit further and dig into what some of those challenges are in this world of Kubernetes cost allocation. So perhaps an oversimplified chart here, uh, but this gives you kind of the traditional method of allocation uh, for traditional workloads, right? So we've got um, you know, a Navy application, a Teal application, an Orange application, and we're very easily able to understand which team, which application is using which resources and driving what costs by the tag key value pairs on those resources. If you're able to you know, work with your teams to tag resources, those will show up in the cost and usage report. And um, then you can analyze those and, and make sure that you're aligning that um, in, when, in your allocation. With Kubernetes, that method completely falls short, right? This is a restructured 
application, um, but largely the same. You're using the same set of resources, but everybody's sharing those resources. And there's no way to get at that same level of data just through basic resource tags. We need another method. Um, and then similarly, idle resources or waste is also shared across the entire cluster. And you need a method to dig into that and make sure that you're optimizing. The reality, though, is it's actually both. Right? There, are, there are very little few teams that are using Kubernetes that are only using Kubernetes. They're also going to be using some resources. Like in this example, we've got folks using RDS, folks using EC2 instances that are wholly owned by them, as well as using Kubernetes workloads. And so we need a method that actually can accommodate both uh, and fully allocate across both of these constructs. So how do we do that? The first thing you do need to do, as we mentioned earlier, is you need to collect utilization data across those Kubernetes constructs. There's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, you may be running Prometheus. Uh, you can get that through AWS Container Insights, or you can also get that directly from the Kubernetes APIs. We also at CloudAbility have an open source metrics agent uh, that you can actually also use to pull these data uh, and analyze them. You then also want to associate these costs um, with that utilization data. Uh, so through the cost and usage report, uh, you can understand resource IDs and other things like that that are in the cluster and get that same data with the utilization data and then match that up uh, and you can use that to perform allocation. The next thing and maybe more important thing is, is, is labeling. Uh, so through Kubernetes labels, you can label workloads uh, and associate those with things that are important to you to allocate. So that may be for you application, team, department, et cetera. If possible, you want to automate this. As you, as you roll out new things, make sure that those are aligned with, with that tagging strategy. And then the next thing you want to do, and, and we mentioned this again earlier, is you want to align that again with your um, you know, overall resource tagging strategy. So if you, if you align your label strategy in Kubernetes with your resource tagging strategy, same keys, so you know, team key, app key, business unit key, et cetera, uh, then when you're analyzing these data later, you can associate them together with the cost data and perform allocation across those constructs. Okay, now that we've done that, um, you know, let's show how you can actually allocate and then think about optimization. So the first thing you'll be able to do is you'll be able to visualize your Kubernetes costs you know, based on clusters, namespaces, label key value pairs across different resources and understand how those costs are allocated back to those constructs and assign those to teams. You'll also be able to visualize your Kubernetes costs alongside your non-Kubernetes costs. I think we talked about before, you know, there aren't going to be teams using Kubernetes that are not also using non-Kubernetes resources and it's critical to be able to fully allocate all of that uh, in a single location across those constructs. And then you'll be able to create dashboards to give visibility for those teams um, you know, across those constructs so they can actually see that, how they're performing. You know, in the upper right-hand corner, uh, we're seeing how idle resources change over time, and that can be a trigger for, for folks to go back um, and look at optimizing that cluster. I think one other critical thing to think about uh, when you're doing this is accuracy. You want to make sure that you're allocating requests over usage. We still see a lot of over-provisioning at the request where there's consistent uh, requests that are higher than the actual usage in the cluster, and that's the data that you should use to allocate. You also want to surface the difference over time so folks can adjust those requests to align with their actual usage, including spikes in usage. You also want to factor in things like node pinning. All nodes in the cluster aren't going to be the same cost over time, uh, so you're going to want to make sure you're tracking which workloads are running on which nodes and use that data uh, to allocate properly. You also want to factor in you know, your actual costs. You know, most teams are not completely being charged just on demand rates. You might have some RIs running. Uh, you might have some discounts being applied. It's critical to use that data to really understand the full cost uh, and accurate cost of each team uh, so you can consider that uh, moving forward. And then lastly, uh, you want to make sure that you're reporting on idle resources and consider different methods to do that. If your you know, cloud is being developed by a cloud center of excellence, you may want to you know, bucket those idle resources separately in a single bucket so they can assess opportunities for optimization. You also may want to peanut butter that idle across those same teams and business units 
uh, to give them an opportunity to understand where they can optimize and do better. That's it for me. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, you can see how you can contact me if you want more information. And please complete the session survey. Uh, and thank you so much for watching.